Sid's love of video games began on a South Sudanese refugee camp in Uganda. That love of games, combined with his um, experience as a refugee, left to, le led him to the idea of making games for peace. So he's joined today by Leo of Facebook to hear more about that journey. Thanks, guys. How's it going, everybody? I uh, hope all is well. We've had a pretty incredible day today. Um, I think that you know we can't thank Dean enough for bringing us together around the inspiration that community brings and the importance that community brings to every single thing that we do. And so we heard Phil talk about like the democratization of game development, and then we just you know we've heard uh, you know Ted and Morgan talking about giving the underdog a voice. Um, I think we live in pretty incredible times. And we have one of the most incredible people I've ever met, a uh, game developer here, Luol, who's going to share his story with you. So um, I'm going to shut up now and just let Luol talk about what he's done, because it's absolutely incredible. So Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Luol, could you, could you, uh, you spent, you're 24 years old. Yeah. You spent your first 20 years, 22 years, in a Sudanese refugee camp. Yeah. You're now a game developer. How did that happen? Yeah, Tell us uh, your story. My name is Luan Mayen, and um, I'm from South Sudan. Uh, South Sudan is the youngest, uh, I think, like the youngest country in the world. Um, we got our independence in 2011. So the war in South Sudan began like a long time ago, whereby, you know, my parents had to like flee away because of the, because of the war. It took them almost, almost three years for them to get to, to northern Uganda, actually, uh, because they had to walk to find a place of refuge. So on the way, um, I was actually not born because the, the war began in 1991. Uh, and as, as they reach uh, the border between Uganda and South Sudan, I was born on the way. And the biggest problem was uh, my mother was the only person with, uh, with the children. I had like uh, four sisters, but two of my sisters did not make it to, because of the war, there was no food and, and so on. So reaching the border, I was born and then uh, we reached uh, to northern Uganda, which was like the refugee camp where we settled. And um, living in a refugee camp was not easy because it, it's an environment whereby like nobody would ever be like, you know, a refugee. Nobody would ever want to believe in the refugees because there's no power, there's no internet, <laughs> there's no like, there's no food, there's no medication, there's no clean water. Like, there's a lot of things that like that you face as a, as, as a person. And growing up in a refugee camp, I remember like the biggest thing we faced a lot was like food because you wake up in the morning and you have nothing to eat. Uh, so what we'll do as children, we'll just go to the bush and like just get any type of fruits and then like start eating the fruit. Uh, and then we discover like a, a, a fruit which was really very dangerous. We used to eat it, it's like gravy, like you know the gravy, like the green type of fruit. Mm. So like after eating the food, we came back and sleep, and you wake up in the morning and you see like your mouth is swelling like really big. And then because it was the only thing we could eat, we didn't stop eating it. We would just go back and eat it, and then we discover another innovative way of eating it so that it doesn't affect you. So what you will do is just get the, <laughs> you get the, the fruits and throw it into your mouth without chewing it. So if you chew the, <laughs> if you chew the fruits, it's going to affect you. So like. It was an environment whereby it was not easy to grow up. So I remember like in 2007, we went to, for refugee registration. So when they were reg registering refugees, uh, that was the first time I saw a computer in 2007. And then I was asking my mother, what is that? And my mother was telling me like, that's a computer. And I was like, how did you even know it was a computer? Because she's not educated and so on. But like, yeah, this is like, uh, from that day I had like, uh, like a feeling that I want to use this one day. I don't know what it's going to take me, but I would love to use a computer one day. So it took me a long time. And then in 2013, 2010, I asked my mother that I need to buy a computer. And she was looking at me and laughed, like, what are you going to do with a the computer? There's no internet, there's no power to charge it. There's no person who is going to train you on how to use a computer. But I was like, no, like, I, I need a computer. But because she was a mother to me, she spent almost three years looking for $300 to buy me a laptop. So uh, and then from there she came and gave me the, you know, 
give me three hundred dollars and say like you can go and buy a computer. So that day like changed changed my life, and I was like, I have to work so hard because this is the only thing I can do. Because she has really worked so hard to get for me a computer, I was going to really work so hard for me to figure out how to use it. So it took me almost three hours per day to to walk to a place whereby I can be able to charge my laptop. So I would do that every day, and then. I discovered there was an internet cafe which somebody was using to like, you can be able to download like anything you want. So I went to the internet cafe and my friend installed for me a video game called uh, Grand Theft Auto, uh, GTA Vice City. So I, 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 I didn't know how to play it, so I came back home and I opened it, it was on my desktop. And then I started like, figuring out how to play Grand Theft Auto. Like, I never thought like video game are created by people. I thought they just fall from heaven. Like I never knew like what is the best way you can become a developer or make video game and so on. So like playing video, uh, playing GTA Vice City like inspired me so much in a way that uh, what was happening in the game was like you know I'm from a country like whereby 73 percent of the population is under the age of 30. These are all young people. And these are the people who were, you know, they grew up in war, they were born in war. So their mindset and attitude is all about war. And I was thinking like, if they start like playing this game, like what, what was actually in the game was what was happening in my country. And I was like, if I can be able, because I, I realized the power of game. You know, game make us like to think critically and also to respond, I was like, what is the best way like for me to utilize gaming to create peace and conflict resolution? So that people can be able to, you know, play a game that can be able to change their mindset. Yeah. So how did you uh, learn how to code? So, <laughs> so how I learned how to code was I started like uh, downloading tutorials, and then I started like using tutorials to train myself. And um, it was not easy. Like using Unity was like the the worst thing like I've ever tried to use because I I was so creative. Like I would spend a lot of time like just figuring out like what, you know, what I can do. And sometimes I would make an error that is going to take me about two weeks to fix it. And nobody is going to be there like, well, say, yeah. you, you were using an offline. Offline, yeah, like. Somebody just <laughs> handed to you on a USB Yeah, drive. a USB charger, then I download it to my computer. And then like start using it like most of the time. Like I don't have to have access to internet to, yeah, to build my first game. And so um, why don't you tell us about your first game what is it called, and why is it important to you? So I, I made a game called Salam. Uh, that was the first version of, uh, of the game I made. So it's a game that helped a player to become a peacemaker, whereby you protect the communities, like a woman that's going through war, then you have to protect them, and then take them to a peaceful village whereby they can be able to you know, feed their children and you know, live in a, in a peaceful world. And what happened in the game as a player, you, yeah, like you interact with the character. You, you be like you are the one in the character and play like it's like, um, yeah, it's more of like helping the player like to, to have a role in, 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 in things that are happening in the world. So mm. using, using games yeah. to help people understand mm. how to build, you know, solve conflicts between people is something that's really important to you and I think mm. you're, you're making a board game about mm. that as well. Yeah. You want to tell us about that? I think right now, if you look to me, I feel like True peace is something that is built over time. And right now, the world is looking for, you know, there are a lot of countries that, that are going through a conflict every day. And without peace, we, can, we cannot do business. When you go to my country, nobody's doing business because it's a country that is destroyed by war. And I feel like the industry, the game industry, would be like a great, a great tool for us to start like making games that can be able to change the mindset of people. And as I mentioned before, like, game can be able to engage people. They can be able to bring people on the table and play. And I'm working on a game which is like a board game because we have almost 2.5 ref, uh, million refugees who have no access to like digital game and have no accessibility to a lot of games. So I'm using a board game that is more of conflict resolution and play on a conflict. And then you can be able to create your own resolution to the conflict actually. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. I remember the first time I heard this, I was talking to Lawal and I thought, mm. hey, you're making games. Like, is it about, you know, orcs and goblins or space or shooting or like, what's this all about? And he said, no, it's about trying to help solve the world's problems. So like, this is a, this is a real mission for you. How, how has 
your, how have your games been received by you know, your community um, in the refugee camp? So like when I made my first game, it was like, I was crazy, like nobody would give attention to me. And uh, most of the children, like I, it was so hard for me to distribute the game, that was the biggest problem. So I made the game which was less than 10, uh, 10 MBs, it was really so light. And then I used like uh, our Bluetooth and then to like to be able to like share the game within the community and people can be able to play uh, the game. And I remember like the biggest turning point, like my focus was just like, I didn't even know more about the, the game industry. Like I was like, let me just focus with the people in my community and distribute the game to them. And one day I was like, no, I, I need maybe to distribute the game more to a lot of people. And I did not have a store to publish it. I upload the game on my, on my Facebook page and like the APK on my, on my Facebook page and people like start downloading it from, uh, from my Facebook page. Even uh, uh, that's where Rami Ismail uh, discovered the game and he was like, he reached out to me and uh, the game community has been really so amazing, yeah. That's great. And yeah. then uh, one of the things that, that we worked on together this year is we partnered with the Game Awards and we created a recognition called Global Gaming Citizens. And Luwal is, is one of the first recipients of Global Gaming Citizens, which is recognizing people using the power of games to improve, grow, enhance their communities. Mm -hmm. um, what has it meant to you to be a global gaming citizen and, and what, is, what has your journey been like? I know, I know you have a couple of new celebrity friends. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's really a very good uh, program because uh, most of the people, it, it, it's a platform whereby most of the game that are for social impact are recognized in the same, in the same community of, of game designers. And that can be able to give so much hope to other game designers who actually look working so hard to make games for social impact. So if they see a uh, game for, for peace building being recognized at that level of, you know, of the industry, they'll be like, oh wow, this is great. And other type of players can be able to, to get involved. And one of the things that I found out is that um, it has opened me a way to like initiate conversation on uh, last, uh, last week I was giving a talk at, at the World Bank Spring Meeting and um, to talk about using the power of game to, you know, to bring global um, uh, gaming communities. And because look, the World Bank is, it, it's, a, it's an institution that is working so hard to build development in other countries. And when they realize that game are trying to enter into such kind of platform, they gave me the opportunity to talk about like what video game can be able to do and yeah. what games can be able to I, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty incredible time yeah. that we live in. Um, fun fact, something you guys might not know, uh, I was born in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, my dad was born and raised in Uganda. So you, Luol and I are like Ugandan and cousins. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So your story is particularly inspirational, but you. you know what? What message do you have for people out there? I mean, you're the best case of mm -hmm. growing up in a refugee camp, making games, and now you're on a stage in front of, you know, this incredible games industry here. Mm -hmm. Like, what? I mean, what like, message do you have for us? This, this, this has never been my dream, honestly, uh, to be here today, uh, because a lot of people ask me every day, like, what made you so different from? almost 2.5 million refugees and people have no food and so on. And to me, like the message I always tell to the, to the people is like, I was so passionate about making game because the first day I play a video game, it really interacts with me. And the second to that, I was really so, you know, I was so happy with what I, with the product that I was going for. Mm -hmm. So the, my message is like, whatever we're doing in the industry, we have like so much role, we have so much responsibility because it's an industry like that's growing every day, like every, every day and then when you go to a refugee camp, kids are playing video game. They have no power, they will, but they will do anything for them to play video game. You know, because it's, it's, it's a product and um, when it comes to peace building, to me I feel like it's a time for us to, to make peace as a product, something that you interact with, something that you, you know, when we have video game, people playing, it, it becomes like a product that you interact. It's not all about like, politician coming together and signing a ceasefire. It, it, it never goes to the root cause. It, that's, that's why video games are very important. Another thing is like, you know, a lot of developers would ask me like, you know, 
how did you manage to walk three hours per day to charge your computer? You know, my mother, my family had to walk from South Sudan to Northern Uganda. And she like worked so hard for me, for, for her to get me like a computer. So that was nothing to me. That was like, I have to work so hard because I'm so passionate about it. And when we are passionate about something, we can always spend a lot of time to, to, to create a better product. And that's why like it inspired me to, to make my game. Yeah. That's great. And so now you're you're here in the United States. Yeah. Um, you live in Washington, D.C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did how did you how did you come over to Washington? Yeah. Like um, so. First of all, like I I remember like when I'm R Rami reached out to me, he invited me to GDC for uh, for one reason to be, and I did not make it because of the Trump refugees travel ban. Uh, but after that, I I got another opportunity of being recognized for using game for social impact. So I got a, um, a visa that let me stay in the, in the US and uh, working on my game right now. Uh, I'm working on, on my uh, Salam game, uh, which we are publishing on Instant Game. And I'm really, <laughs> I'm really so excited about that, yeah. Awesome, and then, yeah. and then your, your board game, yeah. you're raising money as well. Yeah, so right now I'm raising money for, for my Salam game, uh, which is actually a game that uh, uh, that help a uh, player to, you know, bridging the virtual world and the community in the refugee camp. So as I mentioned before, it's a game whereby whenever you buy um, food for your character in the game, you're actually buying a food for someone in the refugee camp. When you're buying medicine for your, uh, for your character in the game, you're actually buying medicine for someone in the refugee camp. So like players who are going to play my game are going to like have impact and have like a dashboard where they interact with the people in the refugee camp. So that's something like I'm really uh, working on right now and I'm getting so much support from the instant game uh, uh, in terms of technical and um, I'm really excited that Facebook is, is able to, to help. Yeah. yeah, so I'm working on uh, launching a Kickstarter very soon, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so he's gonna be launching a Kickstarter soon. Yeah. Everybody in this room, <laughs> yeah. uh, might be a couple here who could, who could help him out. Yeah. Um, we may have time for a couple of questions, but yeah. is there, do you have any final kind of final messages for us? Like, I'm personally extraordinarily inspired by your story. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, what, what have we not covered that you think we should, we should be talking about today? I think that's, uh, I just want to thank like mostly the game community because I, it's, it's a community that has really brought me where I am today. When honestly, like when I talk about a refugee camp, you know, the way people start emerging in it is different from what I'm, I talk about because like, how would you even come here from a refugee camp here, from here? But it's all about like the game community that has worked so hard and having that, um, you know, love for the refugees, having like uh, that, you know, welcoming spirit and, 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 you know, yeah, and working together is very important, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, is there any questions from the audience? I think uh, I've known the wall for a little while now <laughs> and, and every opportunity that, yeah. that we have to connect, I learned, I learned something new, but um, I would argue that, you know, he tells the, the perfect story of what's powerful in the games industry today. Mm. Um, so is, is there anybody else, anybody who has a, a question for the wall like while, we, while we have him here? No? All right, yeah. one question, <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, I think that's a question that's gonna be hard for me to answer because um, it's, it's based on, you know, uh, the, the community is, is built on, co uh, is, it's, the game industry is built on communities and people who choose to play game. And to me, like, my biggest focus is, like, identifying my, the solution, uh, the problem that I'm trying to solve. And that problem has its own community. And all the communities, like, that are focusing on uh, promoting conflict resolution, uh, peace building in, in different world. And what I ask myself today, like, when someone talk about conflict, what come into your mind? When someone talk about war, what come into your mind? It's a community of everybody. It, it's not like, do you think it's, it's South Sudan that's the only country that's going through conflict? Is it Syria? Is it Yemen? Conflict is not even in your family. And how do you come together as, with your children and play this game? And it's all about like, the game design and how people can be able to like 
react into yeah into like playing video game and not just thinking about like um, uh, conflict. It's something from different worlds that within you and how you can learn. And yeah, that's it. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. So what did, what did we learn here today? We have a gentleman sitting here. Mm -hmm. I encourage everybody to talk to the wall. Mm -hmm. Saw his first computer in 2007. Had to walk three hours each way in order to get power just so he could use the darn thing. Taught himself how to code. Finds himself here on stage you know, in Los Angeles talking about community and really inspiring all of us. Um, I think the, the list could go on and on. And you know, your games are really about bringing this world closer together. So I just wanted to say, you know, on behalf of the entire games industry, thank you for what you do and really yeah. inspiring us to be better. Thank you for the Global Game Citizen. <laughs> Thank you.